if I jump from a second story window, I'm most likely going to break my legs. If I shoot up with a dirty needle that some other junkie has used, I'm likely going to get hepatitis or some other disease that's much worse. If I'm unfaithful to my wife and run around and have unprotected sex with strange individuals, um, I'm probably going to get a sexually transmitted disease. This is an example of um, truth and consequences, right? Of uh, action, reaction. It's just going by the laws of nature. It's just what's going to happen um, as a result of those particular actions. Well, in the spirit realm, uh, the same thing is true. Uh, you do something in the physical realm or in the spiritual realm, and there's going to be an equal reaction uh, to that action. And a lot of times I, I've heard a lot of people say, well, you know, it's very dangerous or foolish or ignorant or archaic to say that um, what you do spiritually can affect something physically that my sin or uh, the community sin can cause changes in the environment or changes in the weather. Uh, they say that that's hearkening back to, you know, being fearful and worshiping a pantheon of pagan gods uh, and attributing acts of nature to these gods. But that's not necessarily true because, you know, God is is a spirit and God is infinite. And uh, we don't always understand God's economy and how things work in the spirit realm and how God has things legally set up in the spirit. But in Psalm 107, verse 33, it says, God changed rivers into deserts, springs of water into thirsty ground, fruitful land into a salty waste. Why? Because of the wickedness of its people. So public communal sin has the potential to cause drought. And if you go back to Deuteronomy uh, chapters 27 and 28, it talks about the blessings of obeying God and the curses of disobeying God. And if you read down through these curses of disobeying God, there are particular sins linked with particular natural phenomenon that will result um, when you participate in a particular sin. There are certain sins that will be that will cause the community to be conquered by their enemies. Uh, certain sins that will will cause um, barrenness and unfruitfulness uh, within the community, uh, and there's sin that will lead to drought. Uh, and so it, it says here, God changed the rivers into deserts, springs of water into thirsty ground, fruitful land into salty waste because of the wickedness of its people. You know, there's been some uh, parts of the United States and some parts of the world that have experienced monumental drought, monumental drought for years on end. And just one example I can think of is, is California and that region. It is one of the most liberal, one of the most quote unquote progressive, uh, liberal states in all of the United States. They're the ones that uh, are groundbreakers and promoters of you know, immorality and legislating immorality and that are the first to jump on the bandwagon to do something totally against God's word. And so I believe that as a result, they've been in like a seven-year drought. And every once in a while, you'll have rain within that drought, but it'll be a gully washer. It won't be a nourishing rain. It will be a rain that will cause mudslides and will cause further destruction and devastation. So, you know, there's a great danger uh, in drought. I remember as a, as a young kid in church, uh, one time uh, in my community, we were having a, a summer of severe drought, and the pastor got behind the pulpit and pleaded for the people to come forward to have a communal prayer to end the drought. And in this process of communal prayer, sins of the community were confessed um, and asking God to forgive and to, to send the rain. So they understood the principle of, of sin and certain sins causing drought within the community.
And wouldn't you know it, after a while, the rains did come and the drought did end. And I believe part of that was because there was a lot of churches that band together and communally uh, confessed sins of the people and sins of the community. And, and rain uh, came and the drought ended. Now, please don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that every single uh, phenomena of nature is somehow connected to human sin. I'm not saying that, you know, floods and tornadoes and tsunamis and, and things like that. I'm not saying that all of those are judgments, but I'm just saying that sometimes you can connect the dots and make a connection between sins of the people and uh, phenomena in nature, specifically drought. And there is that passage in Second Chronicles where it says that if a people would – that are called by God's name and uh, the United States and Canada have been called Judeo-Christian nations, that uh, if uh, a nation that is called by, by name would humble themselves and confess their sins, that God would heal their land. Healing their land indicates healing from drought. <laughs> That's just – you know, but one interpretation. So you see a clear connection between sin and drought. So – we need to confess and, and uh, the sins of not only ourselves as individuals, but sins of the community as well to keep our community healthy and to keep our agriculture uh, growing and, and, and prospering as it should. Hey, guys, thanks so much for listening. Go out there and have a great day. God bless. Abrahamsdescendants.com, getting back to the first century in a 21st century way. Thanks for watching! Don't forget to press the like button as well as the subscribe button if you haven't done so already and the notification bell that will let you know every time I make a new video. And don't forget to share this with a friend. Also, visit our website at abrahamsdescendants.com. Thanks! Shalom! Thanks for watching! Stay connected by subscribing to our other social media accounts and visiting our website at abrahamsdescendants.com.